right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the third part of uh, Volume Spread Analysis, part three. Let's go. So getting a lot of good feedback from you guys. Um, you're liking the videos. You like part one. Uh, you're liking part two. I've uh, been putting up videos in between, kind of showing it in live charts also. So I hope that's supplementing what I'm talking about, not just me drawing a bunch of bars and and uh, you'd never plan out live. Um, so I hope you see that this is actually something that works and something that you can implement. So let's go to part three. Um, let's keep it uh, in the same vein as part two. So you can just kind of watch them all together. Uh, this is going to be like a moving average here. Let's say this is a 20 MA. And this and this, this can be anything, guys. Okay, this can be a VWAP. This can be a, a moving average of any length. This can be a, a trend line, whatever, whatever. I I drew this to show you that it's an area of interest that possibly acted as uh, support before. Okay? Uh, so, one of the things that you, that you notice when you are um, trading with volume in mind and you're you know analyzing you're doing your volume spread analysis is that uh, we talked about how the spread and the um, volume should be in harmony right if there's a big volume there should be a big spread if there's small volume there should be a small spread and if you have a divergence from that any combination of the two uh, you know a small spread big volume big volume small spread uh, you have to look at and start thinking about participation of, of the bulls and the bears of either side, okay? To give you a kind of clearer picture. We're gonna take it one step deeper here, okay? And we're gonna talk about combining all of the, all of the, you know, the candles that you've seen on your screen to get a better picture of where the market's going. Not just candle by candle, but within sets of candles, okay? So if you wanna see volume increasing in, a, in the direction that you're going, okay? You want to see up volume. You want to see volume increasing up as the move goes up, right? And you want to see decreasing volume. Um, you know, if, if the volume is decreasing, you want to see decreasing or increasing volume down, right? So what happens when you get a divergence within uh, pullbacks, okay? And this has helped me determine which pullbacks are viable and which pullbacks I should probably wait or you know just stay away from altogether. Because what you'll notice is you'll have a move like this, and we'll go through this bar by bar. You'll have volume increasing. Okay. You'll have the spread You have the spread PM. Jesus. You'll have the spread increasing or being maintained when volume's going up. Okay, you see the spread here? This spread's a little bigger. Okay, it's kind of like a pause bar. Sellers, you know, kind of uh, participating in this. This is how I read the market, okay? And then you got another bar. The spread's back. The spread and the volume is back. So this spread's bigger than this spread. This volume's bigger than this volume. That's harmony, okay? Then you've got this, this volume here, which is bigger than all the volume before, but the spread, eh, it's kind of it's kind of petering out, right? So now you've got this reversal going on here. Okay, you're near the moving average. So what happens? You have a big spread, the biggest spread that you've ever had. Price tries to push up. Okay, they try to push up, but then they get slammed back down. What's happening in this bar? If you've watched video one and two, you're probably already thinking about participation and what, what I believe is happening in this bar. So the bears try to continue their momentum, but because this spread was decreasing, relative now remember remember that word relative because this is all relative okay relative means in relation to the previous candles okay so or the previous spread of the candles okay so you wouldn't compare uh, let's say volume on a Friday to volume on a a uh, Wednesday you know Friday people have to make the decision whether to hold their position until the weekend uh, you know, if something hits the tape, you get a tape bomb, it could have a really big impact on volume. But generally, the beginning and the end of the week are uh, going to be heavy volume um, days. So if you're comparing, say, a Friday's volume to a uh, Wednesday's volume, uh, I don't know why this would be Wednesday, 
to a Wednesday's volume, okay? You could just have more volume here because it's a Friday if you're on the daily chart, okay? Not because price is picking up, but because there's a lot of participation because people are making decisions on how to, they're either gonna hold their positions over the weekend, which is always risky, or they're going to you know, close them out. So either way though, you tend to get a lot of trading and it's the same from the open to the close. You look at any chart and you're gonna see big bars at the open, probably your biggest bar is your first bar, and then for the first 30 minutes, they're gonna be relatively high, okay? And then they're gonna peter off, okay? People go to lunch, and then at the close, what do you see again? Boom, big bars again. And it's because, again, people are closing out their positions for the day. If everyone was short all day, you're gonna get a covering rally into the close, okay? Does that make sense? So you have to be aware of what time of day that you're comparing your relative volume to because if you're comparing, you know, this opening volume, okay, you're comparing opening volume to midday volume, that's going to throw off your analysis because opening volume is always going to be more than midday volume because that's when everyone opens up. That's when all the orders start firing at the market at the open. So... Remember that concept of relative volume. So if getting back to this candle, if you look at this, this volume relative to the last five bars, that last four bars that came before it is high, right? It's the highest one, okay? This here, this candle here, you saw that they tried to participate, okay? They tried to push up here, but they came back down they were pushed down. Now, you have the most volume that you've ever had, but look at this spread. It's teeny tiny, okay? It's the smallest spread on here with the most volume. So what does that tell you? Well, if you're thinking like we've been talking about, this is telling you that your, your um, bulls really, really, really tried to defend this bar, okay? They really tried to defend this bar. You probably had participation somewhere around 50-50, Okay, oh, but a little bit more tilted to the bear side because they were able at the end of the candle to drive it from the open to the close. They were able to drive, drive it lower. Okay, so then you wait for the next candle. And this is what we'll talk about. This is the, 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 crust, the uh, crux of the video here. Next candle comes in, volume dries up. Okay, volume dries up. Small spread, small volume. That's harmony, right? Now it's bad for you. But if you're a bull, you're going in this direction. It's bad for you that it went down some more, but you know that you're near a moving average. So this is important. As you're approaching a key level of support, and like I said, it can be a trend line. It can be VWAP. It can be supply zone, okay? Anything. Uh, as you're approaching these areas, you want to see what the other side is giving you, all right? Uh, I was trading... Um, uh, what was I trading? SPY yesterday. And SPY approached this level that it had sold off from the day before. So it had done one of these, had broke through this level, sold off, okay? As it reapproached the level, okay, there was not any sellers coming in to this level, okay? They, they, were, they were actually backing off. And as expected, the price broke right through, all right? When it got a little bit higher, they started to sell, and then it came back down, but it was already too late, okay? The bears or the bulls saw that they had momentum and they broke back through again and continued higher. Okay, that happened just yesterday in the SPY. Um, so what you wanna see is, when you see a pullback, you wanna see declining volume on the pullback because it's the inverse of this. If you're going in this direction, you wanna see volume moving up to confirm your move, but if you're going down, you wanna see volume going down Okay, and this is confirming that this move down, this whole move down here is weaker than this move up. Okay, so and if you're approaching a, a support area or a moving average or whatever, you want to see that because that's telling you, okay, I can probably buy this. I'm looking to add to my position. So if I bought here and it rallies up here and as it gets back to here, volume is drying up from the sellers. They were real aggressive here. They were aggressive enough to push to push down, but now they're out of inventory. They got no more to sell. Okay? 
So as it comes down here and starts to peter out, when I see this on a chart, this is a signal, especially with this wick here, I did the wick on purpose, this is a signal for me to go long because what happened is the bears pushed it all the way from this open all the way down here, okay? And then, not a lot of volume, the bulls were able to come back and give you a wick. You guys see that? Okay? And then you get this reversal. The bears or the bulls step right back in and continue their uptrend. Okay? Continue their uptrend to higher prices. Break through this on heavy volume and continue going up. Okay? Break through the moving average and continue going up. As price approached a key level of support, the other side, they got timid. They got timid. They did not want to sell into this level because they didn't believe that the price would go much lower so that they could profit. Okay? Does that make sense? So if that's true, if you have prices going up, prices going up, that's harmony, right? We'll call this harmony, H. Price is going down, why price is going down. This is also harmony, okay? This is also harmony because if the trend is up, obviously the other side's weaker, okay? If the trend just keeps going up and up and up and up and up for days and days, obviously the bears are weaker, right? But you wanna see that illustrated to you in the chart, okay? And then when the next leg starts, you wanna see business as usual. You wanna see uptrend, volume increasing, okay, spread increasing, or at least, at the very least, being maintained, okay, and this is something else I thought of, I was just thinking of this um, when I was recording a video yesterday, um, think about uh, like a bully in school, okay, uh, bullies are not respected in school, they're feared, but they're not respected, you know, when they're, when they're picking on someone smaller than them, because you can obviously beat this other person. You know, if you've got some big 200 pound bully and this little scrawny 130 pound high school kid and he's being pushed around, no one respects the bully because you're, you, you, you're supposed to be able to beat up this little guy. Why are you picking on him? Go pick on somebody your own size, right? You've heard that before, right? So think of that in terms of this. If, if, you, have a, if you have a small spread, okay, you have a small spread, I'm sorry, a small volume, this is volume, but you have a huge spread. Why would you ever be impressed by this huge spread? What did the buyers have to overcome to create this spread? Who did they have to beat up? Nobody. They were picking on the, they're picking on the other side. They're totally stronger than the other side and they're showing you. We put in a little bit of energy, look at how much spread we got out of this. You're not impressed by that. What you're impressed by, okay, is when someone picks on someone their own size and then they win, right? That's why the big boxing matches are, you know, they're between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, not between Muhammad Ali and, you know, Barack Obama. He wasn't even alive back then. Bad analogy, I'm sorry. But, you know, it's not between Muhammad Ali and some no-name fighter. Muhammad Ali and Jake Paul. <laughs> no, not hating on Jake Paul. Uh, or Logan Paul, whatever, which one ever one of the Pauls fault. But you know what I mean, though? It's not, it's not some no-name nobody um, that you beat up that you're proud of. It's when you pick on another heavyweight. It's when you, have, when you have big volume and big spread. That is when you know the move can be trusted because the Bulls had to overcome the Bears at every step to create this spread. Okay, this took no energy at all. There was just no interest in the bulls. So the bears, or, or no interest in, uh, by the bears. So the bulls just ran it up. They ran it straight up. Okay, so that's how I was thinking about it yesterday. You're not proud of someone that beats up someone and there was no challenge there. Like you, you shouldn't have even been fighting this guy. What the hell are you doing? So it's the same with the spread here. Okay, you want to see big volume, big spreads because that shows you that the bulls overcame something and they're continuing to overcome to climb. And what are they overcoming? They're overcoming sellers. They're either breaking through limit orders, limit sell orders that are just resting in the market because remember from video number one or video number two, limit, limit orders are passive. They just sit in the market, right? 
So they're either overcoming that with strength, aggressively buying up through it, or they're overcoming actual cells being put in, active cell orders being put in by the bears. And they're overcoming and they're absorbing and they're still rising. And that's how you get big spreads. Okay, that's how you get heavy volume on big spreads. Otherwise, you get big spreads but light volume and those moves are always suspect. So this here, as the move is coming down to the moving average, and maybe this moving average could have been a little lower, but you know, you, you guys get the concept. As the spread, as it's coming down, the spread is increasing. So now you have the opposite effect. Before, the bulls were really strong. Spreads are increasing. Volume is increasing. Up here, they kind of petered out on this. See this spread here? And then it has a tail. So it was sold down. They bought it back up to close at the high, but I'm not too impressed by this because this spread is just as big as this spread. And last time they battled, they got this out of it. Wasn't no wick on this candle. It was just from open to close, boom, we win. This one though, they lost a little ground. They lost a little bit. Then they bought it back up and then they won. Okay? So they did overcome the bears, but look how much energy they had to put in to do that. Look how much how much money they had to spend to do that. So then the bears can take over relatively easily because as we talked about in other videos, once they start getting below these candles here, the people that bought these candles, they are in trouble. So what happens when they're in trouble? They sell. They either defend or they give up. Okay? So as you see price approaching a pivotal support, like I said, it can be any support that you're using to enter and exit trades. I hope you're doing it around supports. Um, as, as you see them start to, to pick up steam, going into a support, you have to think, what are they trying to do? Well, they're obviously trying to get back below this 20 period moving average, okay? And then they just, boom hit you with a lot of volume, a lot of spread. What's happening here? Stops are being hit. Bears are being, or bulls are being overwhelmed as the bears come down. Dominant, okay? This is a pullback that you would not buy. Now say that this, this um, wasn't down here. Let's say that it's, I tried to make it to where it look, would look like it did. You know, if it's above, if closing prices are above the moving average, it should be rising. If they're below, it should be falling. So I tried to make it realistic, but let's say that it's, let's say it's a little bit down here or something like that, right? Um, as it's approaching this, picking up volume, you have harmony in this move because volume is increasing if you're a bear. But if you're a bull, you've got a problem because now your side, it just showed strength. But now the other side's coming back even stronger. And not only are they stronger, but they're making big spreads. And they're pumping these stops on the way down. Okay? And they're meeting their aim. Okay? The bears got together. They said, we're going to break this 20. And they did it. And they did it. And they took out a previous low right here. So if your stop's below here, you're out of the game, obviously. But could you have possibly seen at this point when the spread was here, when the volume was here and the spread was here, like, hmm, something's not right. They got a big spread into this 20 or a big volume into this 20 right here and it's picking up. Where are the bulls at? You'll hear me ask that sometime when I'm trading live. Where's the other side? Whatever side I'm on. Where's the other side right now? I don't know where they are. So if you look at... Um, if you look at the spread of this candle... And this spread here, you've got harmony here, but to the other side. So I'm going to go over one more thing real quick. And this could be a video in itself, but I think you guys get it by now. Um, cause and effect. Okay. I, I said that smart money wants to move in the area, in the, in the path of least resistance. So when they break levels, when you buy and they break you and take you out of the trade, your stops being hit and it's it's triggering orders that are helping them move down. So if you bought here and everybody bought here, you were there were enough buyers here to stop this momentum down, whatever little momentum they had, right? 
and you had buyers on this candle here and this candle here, okay? Their stops are below and their stops are sell stop orders. So as, as they are pushing the price down, they're hitting your orders and you're helping them push the price down even more. And that's where the volume's coming in at because your limit orders, your passive orders are turning into stops and they're pushing this market down, pushing this market against you, making it very easy for them to break this level. How are they able to do that? They created a cause. They created a cause. They let you see that this trend line held and this, let's pretend this goes back. Let's say this trend line held here. Let's say back here it held, back here it held, and then it held here. So now you've got four touches on this trend line. When it comes back here, you've got people trying to buy here again, okay? But below this trend line, all the way down that people have been buying, there are stop orders. So because they know that, they can manipulate the market down and run all these stops if they want to go up, okay, and then take the market back up without you, okay? So you want to look at it as what, what cause is being, is being, um, the cause might have to be another video. This is already 20 minutes, but you see it all the time. I'll give you a brief demonstration of it. They'll come down. This is a downtrend. They'll come down and they'll stop. They'll come up here. Okay. Automatic rally. They'll come down here. Okay. And they'll come down again and they'll they'll bounce around in here. They'll create this range. It's so obvious everyone can see it. Okay, this is a support, this is a range. How many times do you buy here? Okay, before you, how many times does this happen before you realize, okay, every time it comes here, it's gonna bounce, okay? And then what does it do? After three touches, breaks the range, okay? takes out everyone that was selling there, takes out the seller here, the seller here, the seller here, all in this move right here. Goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up. If there's another range, what it'll do? Break that range also, take out these sellers here. Then it'll come back down, okay? You'll sell on the way, on the way down, it'll come back up, take you out here, and then come back down. Well, this held one, two, three, four, five times, surely it's gonna hold again, wrong, boom, okay? spring and then up this move happened here because it had created this cause this cause had been created and it was so obvious to everyone that there's no one that isn't short here okay i'm sorry there's no one that isn't long here there's no one that didn't buy here buy 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 sell bloom where are your stops they're right here they're below here they're not there shit i hope they're not they're right here Okay, comes out, takes you out, okay? And then everyone that's sold here, well, they're coming for you too because there's now been a cause created on to the upside. So me explaining this at the end of this video, I do need to do it more justice. So I will do a part uh, for, uh, probably not to volume spread analysis, but to um, uh, Wyckoff and um, getting into that and stuff like that. And once again, guys, Tons of excellent material on YouTube about what I'm teaching you. I didn't just go watch their videos and come over here and teach you. I watched their videos. I traded with it. I made money or lost money. And I said, okay, this has some relevance. This has, and then I started to see it. Once you see it, once you learn about it, you can't unsee it on the chart. Okay. Once you know what's happening, you can't unsee it. So then you combine everything you know about what cause are they creating here, okay? And how is volume reacting to it? Because they can create a cause here and never come back to fulfill it. But you better believe when they do come back, that area is gonna be an area of interest. And what's happening to volume when you get to that area? Is it picking up? Is there a ton of interest? Is there a defense? Or is there, they just throw their hands up and you get a big bar like this out of the blue. You're just like, oh my God, this trend was so strong. What happened? Well, it alerted you here because on this pullback, they weren't ready to go down yet. They hadn't created enough cause. That's why the volume dried up as they approached the level. At this one though, they were ready. Volume picked up heavily. They got their aim, they broke the level, took you out of the trade. Made a lot of money on the way down 
and then probably took it back up. Okay. So I hope this helped. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.